Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here and welcome back to another crypto video. I hope you guys all watched my updates regarding the Ripple XRP versus SEC lawsuit. It was a pretty heavy day. A lot has happened. I really recommend you guys to check out those updates, but of course, we can't only talk about the law as a lot, of course, is going on within the community. A lot is going on in crypto generally, and the price is moving quite interestingly. I mean, we're close to 60 cents above the dollar. One dollar freaking 60. To me, it is still unimaginable how quickly this all went. I'm just still amazed. Every single time I look at it, I'm just amazed. Having said that, another XRP Tech update. Why Ripple CTO, XRPL Labs, head voted to lower XRPL reserves. Now, this is something which I noticed a lot of you guys didn't understand what exactly was going on, but let me quickly tell you guys about it. XRPL reserves are relevant to the functioning of the blockchain, as it refers to the minimum amount of XRP that should be saved by the ledger account to perform any action on the blockchain. Currently, the XRPL reserve amount is 20 XRP. This means you gotta have 20 XRP at all times. XRP Labs Vitz Vind was one of the people to comment on the same, with Vind claiming that he voted for a change in the reserve number to 10. He also said, instead of an owner reserve of 5 XRP, trust lines, escrows, offers, etc., my validator is now voting for 2 XRP. So there's two changes. One, this reserve amount going from 20 to 10, and two, the instead of an owner reserve of 5 XRP, or it's actually basically just the trust line, escrows, all those features, the cost going to 2 instead of being 5. According to Vind, Alloy Networks, another influential XP Ledger validator, is once more, I'll talk about the validators in just a second, is also supporting lowering the XPL reserves. He tweeted, well, I don't know exactly what he tweeted, to be honest with you, uh, him specifically, but they're all about the same. They're just talking about this proposed change, and I do understand why, and I also would agree with that, because think about it, guys. Right now, it costs 20 XRP to just have the account, right? Right now, that's freaking more than, it's more than $30. Okay, let's say it's about $30, right? With 10, it's about 50 and I would say the, the perfect number would be around maybe $15 or so that you'd really want to be around. So they're definitely going to have to up that number again if XRP stays steady above $3. But the problem is, and that's a really big problem, upping it is very difficult. Lowering it is not that hard, but making it higher again is very freaking difficult. And the lower you go, the more spam you're obviously going to get, specifically if the XRP price go goes lower. So they want to have it as high as possible, yet as low as possible. And that's, again, where things get difficult. Once more, going lower is really simple because people like lower reserves, lower limits, um, in the sense that you need to have lower requirements, I should say. But they hate when you have more requirements, when there's more pressure, when they you need to have more money locked up, basically. It's just really annoying. So they need to think about this really properly. And the validator part, that is actually something which we refer to every single time I talk about the 50 billion XRP that Ripple has. Every single time I bring that up, I talk about the validators and a lot of you guys actually ask what that means. Well, it basically means the voting power to do something on the XRP ledger. As it stands right now, Ripple can't really do anything with their escrow until they get it. Ripple can't on their own decide, you know what, we're going to take all the 50 billion XRP off. They, they can't do anything like that. They have to go through the proper process, which is basically to ask the validators and to put it up for a vote. And what that needs to happen is that 80% of the validators have to agree for two weeks straight. And if that's the case, if they all vote, again, 80%, like, okay, we're going to burn it, then it's going to be burned. But if they don't, it's not going to. And once more, that is why Ripple on their own could not decide that. There's two things which Ripple could do. One is get escrow every single month and then, again, just sell it, uh, burn it once they get it, which would take a couple of years. It's possible, though. And I'm going to say the second one, um, wait a minute. Yeah, the second no, no, the second thing I guess I should say is that I don't think they should, right? I just quickly had to point that out that I don't think they actually should go about this. They shouldn't go through the validator process of getting those, uh, the, the XRP burned or whatever. It's just going to be a bad thing because we don't know what the XRP is used for, but I'm assuming that in some way, shape or form, it is still actually being used for XRP ecosystem. Moving on, Craig DeWitt posted price and volume uh, rallies expose the efficiency of different blockchains. See XRP stats. Settlement, 3.1 seconds. Transaction fee, 0 0.0004. Scary, fast, and unbelievably cheap to use. XP market metrics are in here. Well, 
just a couple of things I would say. One, XRP is ridiculously fast. Two, XRP is ridiculously cheap to use. And three, this will be the freaking standard. I keep telling people about it. The problem is they don't want to hear it until it is too late, as you guys most likely know already. I should make one thing really clear. I am not an XRP maximalist to the fullest. Uh, there's definitely other cryptos which I think are really cool and really good. I just like XRP a lot. Like I just said over on Twitter. I just said I'm extremely bullish on this crypto because I am. It doesn't mean I only hold one crypto. Then Matt Hamilton, who is the Director of Developer Relations at Ripple X Dev, or actually Ripple, yeah, Ripple X actually, interested in cryptos, blockchain, whatever. He says, I'm losing track of how many blockchains building bridges to the XRP ledger. Wanchain, Hiko, Binance Chain, and now Orbit Chain and Clay. Clay just posted, don't miss out on the new XRP pools on ClaySwap. I'm going to retweet that. I didn't even know about it. Cross chains XRP DeFi made possible by Orbit Chain. And yeah, you can literally see all of it in here. Do I care about this? Um, no, not at all. I'm not going to use it. But it's just good to have. And that's again what it is all about. Then leaked. Revolut users. A lot of you guys in live streams ask me about Revolut because you apparently do some crypto stuff over there. Users will be able to withdraw Bitcoin to their external wallets next week. This is just a rumor, just a hint. Uh, it's not confirmed. There was just a little demo posted by a, a moderator or a staff member. And it says that you can now, from that point of forward, withdraw crypto to your external wallet. We don't know if this is true. It's just a little bit of a hint. Then explosion of new projects coming to Cardano. Several crypto assets poised for major gains. If you're honestly asking me which coins are going to be good, I keep on saying DeFi right now is insane and coins which you know will last for a very good while because I do believe that coins like XRP will right now excel like crazy, mostly because the, the season is here and we already were calling out this trade a couple of days ago. On a different sense, it's also Bitcoin and Domino's going down right now. Again, all coins are poised to have some huge run. That doesn't mean we can't go down further. It doesn't mean so. But the way it's going right now, it does look like it. Again, you, there's a couple things which you can put in here. Obviously, and I always keep that in mind, right? You can also literally see it like this. Uh, that is basically just another bull trap. But this is already a pretty good say, trade setup if you actually bought in here. I guess let's point it like that. Then, $1 billion crypto fund could be on its way from Andreessen Horowitz. The VC firm is looking to raise a considerable sum to put towards crypto investments. To be honest, a billion dollars is a lot of money. But from their side, I guess it's not that much because these guys are always busy with the heavy money. Then again, from a different perspective, Andrews and Horowitz getting into a crypto fund is different than investing in crypto companies. So I definitely think that is interesting. The new fund, Andreessen's third that is focused on crypto investments, is aiming to raise between $800 million and $1 billion from investors, according to four people with knowledge of the process. What exactly will they do? Who cares and who knows? Let's wait for it to come out. Uh, and, and, and then I guess we'll talk about it. It's just really bullish from the perspective that more and more headlines are being made and more and more crypto adoption is coming along. Then this one, I don't really think is interesting once more. Another billionaire endorses, endorses Dogecoin. I actually don't know exactly whom they're talking about here. It says, meanwhile, in the reference to Cuban's appearance on The Ellen Show, crypto publication Coindesk pointed out that Cuban did not mention risk factors associated with crypto. And I'm kind of wondering exactly who they're talking about as the next billionaire, because we knew about Mark Cuban. We knew about Elon Musk. So who was the new one? I guess they're talking here about Ellen DeGeneres. But I mean, I don't take her seriously because that's not really an investor necessarily, right? Or really a business mogul. There's a lot of controversy surrounding her and she's a TV host. I guess she definitely has a lot of money and a lot of fans and a lot of, you know, followers and whatnot. But I don't know, guys. I don't think that's the platform for shilling a meme coin. I just don't. I think there's a time and place for everything. And that definitely wasn't it. And then Aston Kutcher, really fun story. He was involved with Ripple a couple of years ago. He actually donated, I believe, $4 million XRP or $4 million worth of XRP to Ellen a couple of years ago for some sort of charity. Aston Kutcher's net worth is higher because he ignored Mila Kunis over Bitcoin and Uber. Actor Aston Kutcher is worth quite a bit as it is, but his net worth wouldn't have been as high if he hadn't listened. Or sorry, guys, if he had listened to his wife Mila Kunis nearly a decade ago, which I think is pretty funny. All right, there's a couple points to make here, but let's keep it short. It basically goes over the fact that she told him to give up uh, about all of this, and don't go for it, and he sticked with it. And I don't know what you want to catch out of this. Maybe a uh, a little story of don't listen to your wife. Maybe don't listen to your husband. I don't really know. Uh, maybe seek the risk. 
maybe, you know, be him. I don't know what exactly to tell you. All I know is that it is definitely, definitely, definitely in almost any way, shape or form worth it to take some risks here and there. He's definitely made some money with just acting. Then again, if you think about it, putting some money into crypto over these years has most likely made him a ton of freaking money extra and never let somebody, you know, get, kind of put you into selling it. I, I'm just going to put it like that. You know, I just, I just don't think that's worth the whole, uh, the whole part. And again, he's also involved with Ripple slash XRP for years now. He most likely knows what's going on. This guy, let's watch him closely. He knows what's going on. That was it for today's update though. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you press the like button and subscribe. And I will definitely see you guys again in another crypto video. Once more, make sure you smash that subscribe button.